Hidden metronome of typhoidic keys Hello to all of our viewers across Japan and around the world. My name is Sophia and today I'll be standing in front of this camera to show you a very cool part of Japanese culture. I work as a writer at a Japanese company where we make contents of all kinds about Japan and today we want to show you around Kinbue Shoyu Park which is located at the Fueki Soy Sauce Brewery in Kawajima, in Saitama Prefecture, Japan. We're going to give you the soy sauce school experience. Red it takes no time to call To slow down, oh, I pray I'm so glad I found you the old-fashioned way You might know that Saitama isn't just an anime character, it's also the name of a whole prefecture in Japan that sits just north of Tokyo. And the town of Kawajima, where we are right now, is right next to the Saitama town of Kawagoe, where you can dress up in pretty kimono and walk down streets lined with these really lovely old-fashioned warehouses. And to get here, it's actually fairly easy on public transportation just a little bit away from Tokyo. You can go from the major Tokyo stations of Ikebukuro or Shinjuku, and it's just a quick train ride to Kawagoe, and from Kawagoe to Kimbue Shoyu Park, it's just a few stops on a local bus. In the past, Saitama was actually nicknamed Edo's Kitchen, and for a long time, this region has been providing fresh food for the people of Tokyo. But some of the ingredients that flourish here are also important ingredients in soy sauce. And thanks to that natural abundance, Saitama has also been called a soy sauce production zone. And soy sauce, of course, is what we're here to see today. We all know it's an important ingredient in Japanese cooking. But since we're here to study, do you know how soy sauce is made? You can probably guess the most important ingredient from the name. If you're thinking soybeans, you got it. The more difficult question now is how do those little beans turn into a dark liquid with an aromatic scent? Today, we're going to find out the secrets of that process and much more at Soy Sauce School. And while we explore the Soy Sauce Brewery at Kimbue Shoyu Park, we're going to find out all about how the Fueki family has been making soy sauce for 230 years. Kimbue, you don't just get a glimpse of the brewing process, you also get to go to soy sauce school. The brewers are experts in their craft, and they make the tours a fascinating experience for each and every visitor. There's even a soy sauce textbook to guide you on your studies. This soy sauce brewery has been a family business since its establishment, with 12 generations taking over the business in turn. Today, we've been welcomed to Kimbui Shoyu Park by Koharu Fueki. You come over here. So she's married to the head brewer at the moment, and she works here. Could you yeah. tell us about where we are? Who yeah, you are? Uh, my name is Koharu. I am the wife of Trev's generation owner. I, I work in this restaurant and shop here. Where are we now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Kimbe Shoyu Park is all about soy sauce. Mm. Same the complex which offers eating, learning, and shopping experience. Wow, there's a lot to do here. Yeah, you can enjoy a uh, traditional uh, seasoning shoyu. Oh, let's go take a look. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Our first stop on this tour is the Maegura, or the front warehouse, where all the raw ingredients for soy sauce making are stored. And today, showing us around is Koma-san. Could you tell us a bit about yourself? Hello, my name is Yusuke Koma. I work as a soy sauce craftsman for 10 years. I love soy sauce, and soy sauce loves me. I am the first Good looking guy in the company, yes. <laughs> Alright, excellent introduction. 
So we know that the most important ingredient for making soy sauce is soybeans, but I think there are two more ingredients that are vital to the process. Can you tell me what those are? Beef and salt. Ah, oh, yeah, you know best. So many of the ingredients used here are grown in Saitama Prefecture and they're stored in this warehouse that's been in use for a hundred years. Thanks to the good old construction of this building, it stays nice and cool throughout the year and even in Saitama's warm summers, it doesn't need any extra cooling so the ingredients stay fresh. Now, if you come to Kimgue Shoyu Park yourself, you'll get a soy sauce school textbook that lets you in on all the secrets of soy sauce making. And I've heard there's actually a secret right here in this room somewhere. Could you show me what the secret is? Wow, there's a trap door! What exactly is this hole for? Wow, so it turns out if you pour soybeans or wheat into this hole, it'll get vacuumed up into those little red pipes over there and it gets pushed using air into the other warehouses in the brewery. In the other warehouses, they steam it, which is the first major step in the brewing process. Now, I've actually heard that they steam all the ingredients in batches of a thousand kilos of soybeans and another thousand kilos of wheat. It's quite a lot. But those raw ingredients go through a few steps before it all gets steamed and starts to look even a little like soy sauce. In the Mayagura, not only can you see the sacks of Saitama wheat and soybeans from a variety of locales, but you can get a close-up look at the wheat that's roasted until it starts to puff up and then broken into smaller pieces before it can join the softened soybeans. Next, we're going to move to another part of the brewery to find out about the magic behind 230 years of soy sauce brewing history. <laughs> okay. at one of the most exciting parts of the whole brewery, the warehouse where it all happens. behind the delicious soy sauce flavors is actually the process of fermentation. The process of making soy sauce is a lot like making sake, which is fermented rice, or even the miso that goes into miso soup. All of these delicious things take time to ferment, 
and to develop the deep flavors before you ever get to taste them. There's actually one more secret ingredient behind that fermentation, and it's an essential part of the process. It's called koji, or sometimes koji mold. But don't worry, this is magic mold. It takes mashed up soybeans and wheat, and with a little koji magic, it turns the mash into deep brown and delicious soy sauce. But first, you have to mix it all together and let it steam and grow, and the final mixture of wheat, soybeans, koji, plus plenty of salt water is called moromi. That's what you'll see in these 38 huge vats, which are actually traditional wooden barrels with a platform built right on top. Komo-san, could you tell me what's so interesting about these barrels? で、え、大体ですね、寿命は一つの桶150年ぐらい持つと言われてます。で、この杉の木のですね、中にこう、もろみが入っていると、この木がもろみの塩分や水分を吸って、この木、桶が長持ちすることができます。で、この中には、え、
This is what's left of all that moro meat after the soy sauce is pressed out. The bits of wheat grains and soybean that aren't dissolved into the sauce are pressed into the big flat sheets, sometimes used for animal feed or fertilizer. ここにいろんなメッセージが書いてありますが、お客さんがいろいろ書いてくれたメッセージ。この中にもモロミ入ってます。うわ。やん。わお。グッドペイ。It <笑> Thank you. Oh, interesting. I guess it's like mold. <laughs> that makes sense. Thank you. Remember that important koji we were just talking about? Well, this is where they let it grow and where it imparts important flavors into the soy sauce. You see, this koji right here, it really breaks down the ingredients and produces sugars, inviting helpful yeasts and lactic acid bacteria into the mix, which help to create amino acids. And all together, this lends soy sauce the flavors it's known for, from the intense savoriness we all love to the touches of sweetness and acidity, and of course, its aromatic scent. Soy sauce is an umami bomb, thanks to the work that Koji does in this warehouse. Now that we've seen how soy sauce is brewed, we've arrived at the Kimbri Shoyu Park restaurant, where you can try a whole variety of different soy sauces brewed right here at the brewery. They even offer a special dish of soy sauce tasting udon, so you can get the most out of all the different soy sauce flavors. Thank you! And you're beating, beating on my so the standard set here is their normal soy sauce, a reduced sodium version, a soy sauce with added chili pepper, and the one that I think you definitely shouldn't forget to try, their raw soy sauce. I'm add a little bit now. Before the truth <laughs> One last fight before I lose mm. I ask myself Where should I go? Did I do it? It's pretty good. You see, normally when soy sauce is taken out of the barrel, it's first pressed to separate out all the solids and then it's boiled to extend its shelf life. But raw soy sauce is not boiled and basically unpasteurized, which gives it a kind of different taste, it's a little bit more flavorful. You don't get many chances to try raw soy sauce, even in Japan, so it's a pretty rare treat. Although, of course, you could always buy some in the gift shop and take it home with you too. Kimbue Shoyu Park that's a little less focused on soy sauce brewing. For example, this is a playground for kids to play. And if you head this way, you'll find the Nombiri Hiroba, which is an area 
just meant for hanging out. After you've stuffed yourself with lots of udon and soy sauce, you can take a moment to relax in the hammock or the cocoon. <laughs> hey! Should I push? <laughs> You're a little bit low though. <laughs> Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light don't forget to take a picture here when you come. This wooden barrel is just like the ones that they really use to brew soy sauce. So you can head in and pretend that you're a fresh bubbly batch of fermenting soy sauce or hang out near the bottom and pretend that you're a calm three-year brew just relaxing at the bottom of the barrel. What do you think? Are they good poses? Ah, oh, thank you. With <laughs> every we are born again. Open your heart. Spend less time in your head. over to this last little trailer. Just like a seed in a garden You will grow to be tall Staring out of We find a new product that Kimbue has been making at Kimbue Shoryu Park just in the last year. It's nothing like what we've seen over the past few minutes because they're actually baking up Baumkuchen cake. This German cake is quite popular in Japan, but the cake here is extra special. That's called Kyoke Baum, which literally means wooden barrel Baumkuchen, and they even make a soy sauce flavored version of it. It's a totally different way to enjoy the soy sauce here. Finally, we come to the end of our tour. Have we solved the mystery of soy sauce for you? Before you go, let's go over the directions one more time. If you're coming from central Tokyo, you'll first want to take the JR or the Tobu Tojo line to Kawagoe Station, or the Seibu Shinjuku line to Honkawagoe Station. And from those stations, you can take a Tobu bus. Either the Kawagoe number two, bound for Higashimatsuyama, or Hachiman Danshi, or the Kawagoe number three, bound for Konosu Menkyo Center. And then you'll get off at the Igusa Shogaku Maesa, which is right around the corner from here. Or you can always take a taxi from Kawagoe Station as well. So next time you make it to Japan, you definitely don't want to forget about Tokyo's neighbor. Add Kimbure Shoyu Park to your itinerary and make a plan to visit Saitama. I'm so glad I found you the old-fashioned way.